All right, welcome to what is my third attempt at recording this video. Uh, I've been making a few mistakes and having to scrap these videos. So hopefully this one will go more smoothly. Um, so we are looking at uh, chapter 15 and we are going to look specifically at example 15.6. So in this example, we have a cantilevered beam which means it has a fixed support at one end and that's it, no support at the other end. There is a point load applied at the end and another point load applied at mid-span. Each of them have a magnitude of 200 pounds. And the distance between these two is six feet and the distance between this load and the support is another six feet. So the overall span length is 12 feet. So um, we're also told in the problem statement that we may omit the self-weight of the beam. And we are told that that beam is a 4-inch standard weight steel pipe. Um, now, in the last video, I should have taken into consideration the self-weight of the beam. I neglected to do that. So if you are comparing the work I did in the video to the example in the book, you'll see a difference there. But you'll also notice that in the end, the self-weight of the beam made very little difference in the overall deflection. So although I didn't include the self-weight, and I should have, uh, even if I had done that, it would not really have changed my answer by very much. But in this problem, we are specifically told we may neglect the self-weight. So um, why are we looking at this example? What makes this unique or challenging? Well, it's the fact that um, if I try to go to Appendix H and find a situation that has a, a cantilevered beam, can't I lever beam, uh, and uh, with two with two loads, uh, with one load at the mid-span and another at the end, I'm not going to find that situation. Uh, I'm not going to find one single formula that's going to uh, tell me the overall deflection. So what do I do? Well, if I look in Appendix H, I do have situation 13 that gives me a point load somewhere between the end of the beam and the support. Well, we have one of those. Uh, we have the, span, uh, the point load at mid-span. So we've got a six-foot distance there and a six-foot distance there. So if we look at the formulas here, we have delta max at the free end. That's what we're interested in. And that equation is here. PB squared over 6EI times 3L minus B. That is going to tell me the maximum amount of deflection that's going to occur at the end of this beam when um, that load is applied. Okay, so, but that's not the only load that is being applied to our beam. We also have the same concentrated, or uh, same cantilevered beam, but we also have a load all the way out here at the end. And so the maximum deflection caused by that is going to be PL cubed over 3EI. Okay, so let's take those two equations and put them together. They're going to have a cumulative effect. So what I need to do is um, come back over here and write my equation for deflection max. It is going to P B squared over 3 E I times 3 L minus B. That's for the um, that's going to be the deflection caused by this load, the one at midspan. And in in addition to that. I'm going to see even more deflection out here at the end of the beam. Due to the 
load at the, the end. And the formula for that is P L cubed over 3 E I. And that's it, P L cubed over 3 E I. So if I just simply add these two formulas together, it will give me the cumulative effect of the, um, the deflection at the free end. So uh, P is 200 pounds, B is 6 feet, E, we're dealing with steel here. So for any type of steel, except for stainless, according to the, our textbook, if we look in Appendix G, we'll see that the um, modulus of elasticity is 30, thousand KSI. Um, how about I? Well, we have a four inch standard weight pipe, so we need to look in Appendix B. So I'm looking in Appendix B and the I value for a four inch standard weight steel pipe is 6.82 inches to the fourth. Um, now, B was this value right here. This is B according to the diagram over here. So whenever you're looking up one of these uh, equations in Appendix H and you see all these variables, X and A and B, and you're wondering, what, what are these? Take a look at the diagram. The diagram over here is showing us the distance from the end of the beam to the location of the load is A, and the distance from the application of the load to the support is B. So what is B? It's this distance, which in our situation is 6 feet. But we don't want to use um, feet, we want to use inches. So B is going to be 6 feet times for every 1 foot, there are 12 inches. And 6 times 12 is 72. So B is 72 inches. Um, so I've got B, I've got E, I've got I. Uh, L length is 12 feet. But again, we want to convert that to inches. And so 12 times 12 is 144 inches. So I've got P. B, oh, and P is given to us in pounds. Um, P equals 200 pounds. We're going to want to convert that to kips. So uh, divide by 1,000, 1, 2, 3, becomes 0 0.200 kips. Um, okay, I think that's it. So now we can um, plug into this equation and solve. Or um, you can kind of play around here algebraically, and uh, maybe I want to factor out some of these common terms. So both of these terms have a P. I can factor out the P. Um, and both of them are being divided by a 3EI. And um, actually, I think I'll replace that parenthesis with a... With a bracket. Um, so what else did I leave in this first term? So it would be a b squared times 3l minus b. Okay, yep. And the second term here, um, I was factored out the p. I factored out the 3ei, so all I'm left with is the l cubed. So um, I can just plug in my values now. Again, you didn't need to do this step. You could just plug the values directly into this equation right here and get the answer. I'm just kind of messing around with my algebra here. So this is going to be 0 0.200 kips divided by 3 times modulus elasticity is 30,000 KSI. And the moment of inertia was 6.82 inches to the fourth. 
and that is all multiplied by 72 inches squared times 3 3 times um, the length was 144 inches minus 72 inches uh, I'll make that uh, again let's make that a bracket parenthesis and uh, plus uh, L my length was 144 cubed and end bracket all right so all I need to do now is solve this equation so these equations are starting to get a little bit big um, so you need to be careful that you solve them in the correct order of operations so um, I'll start with what I've got here inside of this bracket 3 times 144 minus 72 that gives me 360 uh, multiply by 72 squared it gives me, uh, what is that, um, 1.87 million approximately, plus 144 cubed. Okay, that gives me a very large number. Um, what am I looking at here? Four, about 4.8 million times 0.2. So I'm going to come over here now, multiply by the 0.2 divided by 3, divided by 30,000, divided by 6.82, and that gives me a final answer of, I'm getting 1.581 inches, which I realize is different than what I have in my PowerPoint, but I also realize that the I value for a four inch standard weight steel pipe in the current edition of the book is apparently different than what it was in the past. I was using 6.82 in this example rather than the 7.23 in the previous example. So that's how we handle the situation when we have um, a loading situation that isn't exactly like something in Appendix H. Um, but it's similar enough. Uh, so I'm trying to circle here my original drawing. Okay, so uh, I've got the cantilevered beam with the two loads. That exact situation is not in Appendix H, but there is a situation where we have a load uh, applied partway towards the end of the beam, and there's also a situation where the load is applied at the end. So we combine the two of them and add those together. So that's the procedure that you should use going forward if you're given a situation that is made up of multiple uh, combinations of loads as found in Appendix H.